set up and we can be a very smooth process forward. So uh, what we'll be doing is there will be three workshops followed by uh, the sessions that we will be having post lunch, but uh, we do have some exciting cases uh, that uh, will all be doing the same So we are all done. So yes, and we will some some activities come forward and see this so that everyone just has a uh, uh, to give you an idea what you are going to do with the first workshop. Good morning, everybody. It's a uh, pleasure to be the inaugural person. I managed to see so many known places in the uh, hall. Thank you, WB, to uh, organize the academic inaugural. Uh, Dr. Nirvata will, will be showing you the patient in a very organized way. And then we discuss all questions because it's a live workshop. How uh, welcome. At the end of the day, we should be wiser to evaluate a child with congenital heart disease. I just add one point before we start. When we, when we start to image a child with congenital heart disease, it should never start from the probe. Rather, it should always start from taking a brief history and clinical examination. Because that will give a very brief idea of what we are looking at, what kind of lesion it is. It is an increased flow lesion versus increased flow lesion. The saturation really, which may not be that important in an adult uh, estimate, in reactive clinical, it is very important because we may not know that we child as a borderline sinus and we have reached like 98 98% 90% saturation will not be visible in their eyes. And there may be a small LSVC to the repetrium which will be impossible to detect. So that small piece of information, clinical examination, then an X-ray and CT, that will form a base of our uh, opening idea of what we are looking at and Dr. Devata will take again to a very detailed stage by stage assessment of the heart. And the light shield show and we always discuss. Yes, what do you Thank you. We will start up right away. Uh, just for one minute before we start, mm -hmm. we always follow the C condition segment of analysis. That is, we have a couple of, um, we have this proper way of uh, looking at the child's heart, analyzing everything, starting from cycles. This is the way the area, the directory, etc. The area has the area and the area of organs, the ventricles, the intervention, etc. Powerful tracts, the great vessels, the empty arch, and the semi closing area. Also, including functional and reductions. Everything is uh, sort of done in a systematic manner before uh, going and diagnosing the pathologies. So we started with the first session that is also a workshop on congenital heart disease and the morning the first workshop will be Dr. Aichi and Dr. Peter Dr. Aichi. Good morning everyone. Uh, so she is imaging a child, three years old, and she has a situation of a moderate baby. That is one important uh, point, and we can show the lesion post right as it is. And this is the image of the child, and so we can see the child. Telly? Hello? Yes, yes, you are telling me. It was actually an incidentally detected mama, which uh, I saw the child in the OPD one year back. And it was an incidentally detected mama. She was otherwise a little less prone for her age, but doing well, very active and not. And that led us to do the echo and diagnosis. So this point again, that subtle reduction in the growth, this is one of the silent pointed towards a possibility of whether there is a heart disease. So please, okay. please show. I'm just starting with a situs view. This is the situs view showing the, if I can use the cursor here. Pointer. The pointer. This is the pulsatile aorta over here on the left. This is the vertebra and this is the 
IBC. And we can see the IBC, this is the IBC towards the right on tinting in the sagittal plane. This is the IBC which is collapsing very nicely and entering onto the heart. If we put color, then also the color flow is showing that it is going towards the heart. So this is the IBC tilting. Two point I just want to add one second. When we are seeing the IBC same time the way it is filling the right atrium and how much collapsibility whether there is a reversal or not three additional point will give us additional input congested IBC or there is sign of right side dysfunction. IBC in the right side and going to the right sided atrium that is a very important component to understand whether we are dealing with a situs solitus type of understanding. So here IV, IVC on the yes, C is showing now IVC going to the right sided atrium and then aorta, aorta is on the left side. So this is abdominal situs is solitus. We frequently come across the anatomy where it is situs ambiguous by only placing the uh, IVC and aorta we cannot tell it may be going this way or that way sometimes mesocardic heart so again it comes in picture in this child it was mild cardiomegaly with little bit of increased pulmonary blood flow so see is what this is very very important to show the pulsatile nature of the aorta simple thing it will tell your outflow is okay there is no coarctation per se and another thing whether aortic regurgitation a very small one we are getting but there is no significant aortic regurgitation we can appreciate from there. So obstruction regurgitation both components can be visible and uh, coarctation of aorta in adult is difficult to pick up because suprasternal views are not very great but abdominal this can be very well delineated thereby at least we know there is no significant coarctation. Simple small points here shown. Yes, please carry on. Yes, she is showing that. Nice red color which is showing good flow. So, so yes, please carry on. So, next we are going to the four chamber view. Now, before four chamber, if you can show the subcostal one. See. Just the, change the flow. Uh, the, the, in the pediatric patient, we have one advantage. The windows are much better than the adult population. So we do see uh, good view and it is said in a congenital heart in a kid, the examination basic one is should be over in subcostal view because it gives so nice image of the heart in long and short axis. A baseline understanding is over in subcostal view. Other views just corroborate our finding if the windows are good. So she is showing subcostal short axis this is superior vena cava she is showing coming and then so the bicaval view the yes this is the bicaval view superior vena cava interatrial septum and this is slowly moving so this is the SVC and IVC going so bicaval view is again important to tell yes we have both the vena cava sometime there may not be any superior vena cava and we will be able to understand from this view, we can appreciate there is left superior vena coming with or without right superior vena cava. So, it is a sweep movement what she is doing. Slowly she is sweeping from the right to left and we are seeing structures one by one. If you can kindly sweep, Devdatta, she is showing nicely. So, the aorta started coming in short axis. And then this is the interventricular for a, uh, the septum and then LV in short axis with both the papillary muscles we can appreciate. Optimization of image again is the important thing. Adjusting gain, increasing the size of image to fill whole of the screen so that we will be concentrating more on our object rather than. So here yes, she has now zoomed it, made it more depth, yes, so it is even better. So I think what we are seeing is little bit downgraded image than the machine. So here this view again is important. She is trying to focus on interventricular septum. Clinically she suspected there is a shunt lesion. There was a ejection systolic murmur. 
uh, long systolic murmur in the left sternal border with normal split S2. So, suspicion of and see is slowly showing there is a small flow below the aortic valve and if you can this is that point I am showing small jet in the machine it is better visible very small yes this is the jet what she is trying to show so small jet it is left ventricle to right ventricle communication which is obstructed or restricted by the septal tricuspid aneurysm that thing will be cross checked now in other views so subcostal short and then we can do the long also so this is the she is now showing so there is a perimembranous ventricular septal defect one very important point she is showing here which was clinically not very appreciable and that you are showing so nice image yes this one is a jet coming to the left ventricle and with ECG ECG is little down uh, that is a diastolic jet so there was there is aortic regurgitation presence of aortic regurgitation in and restrictive ventricular defect so we always should think there should be some sort of aortic valve involvement so that will cross check the finding in parasternal long and short axis view so there is restrictive VAG is little tortuous the reason of the tortuosity is the aneurysmal septal tricuspid causing a tortuous pathway and right coronary cusp also is coming in relationship otherwise it will not get distorted or uh, aneurysmal uh, unless RCC is involved I do not expect any aortic regurgitation so she has gone back because she wanted to make sure the point what she wanted to make that there is aortic regurgitation so she is showing that so it is parasternal long axis view we can appreciate uh, a posteriorly directed aortic regurg and that posterior directed regard will happen only when RCC is prolapsing. So, it will regard will go to the posterior aspect. We can, if you can zoom and show, because it is a very restrictive VHD, imaging that is little tricky. You can appreciate if I can draw this is going like a hump, saddle back. One, yes, yes, very good, very good. This one, see, yes, thank you. This and this like a sitting arrangement so rcc you can tell it as a small nipping and which is going inside the vhd causing mild air so that mild air at needs attention and is one of the point which comes in consideration whether we are going to close it surgically or not putting a device if i place my device here my device will sit exactly in the location of the rcc and it may distort it further Surgical closure, there are two schools of thought. If mild air not progressing, we can watch, we can close. If it is subpulmonic VHD, we definitely we are going to close it. The progression is much higher. But in perimembranous VHD, uh, the air is not fully uh, due to the RCC problems per se. So, we wait and watch versus surgical. Operation. So, she is showing the aneurysm. So, little bit of posterior tilt. The interesting important point of look how we are imaging the perimembranous VHD in the long axis if we are seeing the VHD versus little bit posterior tilt posterior tilt in the long axis tilting back then more in favor of perimembranous in location and then if we go to the short axis go to the short axis yes so here the whole of the anatomy full short axis madam thank you she is showing so nicely see the air is significant here significant in not in sense of air significance but it is a demonstrable grade 2 air with you can the, the vhd is in the location of 6 7 o'clock position type or oh, sorry uh, uh, yes 7 o'clock so this restrictive vhd there was a small lv2 ra jet 
So if you if you freeze, yes, you can increase the depth. Yes, thank you. So air is visible. It is a trileaflet valve. A little bit thickening of the right coronary cusp. This is the right coronary cusp, which is possibly a little bit of thickened. And uh, the distortion we already saw in the long axis. Sometimes non-coronary cusp also is very commonly associated because they non-coronary and right coronary. These are the two cusp which comes in relationship of the ventricular septal defect. Shall we go to other yes, uh, four, four chamber, four chamber you can show because we are going uh, segmental analysis. So we saw the situs, we saw the uh, subcostal view, tried to get an understanding. You can invert, you may not invert. Whichever way we are comfortable, both are absolutely fine. It is said, I think Dr. Ghosh and Dr. Parmartha can add that if we see inverted image, the point of interest is more to our eye set length at our height. So, easy to pick up anomalies. I was told by one of the experts that why it is inverted. That was my question. Why we are inverting when we have a digital option to immediately make it ups and down? So, might say most common thing we start seeing is the mitral valve when we uh, invert the image and it is exactly at our eye length and quickly it is identifiable. I think sir you can tell if, if I am correct or not. So, here we can appreciate see showing in the regular inverted view. Uh, left ventricle is little, little, little looking dilated and that dilatation for the VHD or any pathology we always do the M mode and uh, Z score the LV parameter, try to see the volume and try to analyze whether LV is dilated actually going by the age and weight of the child. So, she is slowly scanning the septum from four chamber with anterior tilt showing the aorta and that is modified four or also called five chamber view and the same facts is again showing this is the VHD. This is the VHD and this is the septal tricuspid leaflet aneurysmal. It, it may be around 2, 2.5 millimeter. I am just going roughly. So, this is the, yes, she is measuring now. So, exit, entry, both need to be measured when we try to close. For surgeons, does not matter. They just want to see the RV. A little more, it is less. So, it is around 2 to 2.5. Because it is in three dimensional structure, one dimension may not be adequate. So, two, three things when we see the VHD, VHD jet can hit the right ventricle and induce the thickening of the right ventricle, what is also called gasol phenomenon. Some right ventricular outflow tract obstruction, she is showing very nice right ventricular outflow tract, the uh, pulmonary arteries with minimal of PR, good sized pulmonary artery. So, there is not much of right ventricular outflow tract obstruction which is caused by the VHD jet, the Gasol phenomenon has not happened. So, she is showing in the short axis and then ventricular short axis. So, so coronaries, next point is coronaries. She is showing nice coronaries in the short axis. So, left main dividing in the LAD and SARC and we, we not unfrequently we see uh, anomalous coronaries. It is very difficult to pick up anomalous coronary in the setting of VHD because the flow reversal does not happen LV is equal to RV. It is difficult to pick up. Nowadays the coronaries are very important for children because we are getting a lot of diagnosis of Kawasaki disease and MIST. So, Quick look at the coronary, coronary is important that. then and now at all age group. Yes. Only thing in adult we may not be getting nice views, sometime only, but in pediatric we are fortunate to see the at least proximal coronaries. Yes. So she is now showing coronary very nice image, very nice image to show the with flow. Coronary demonstrations are again very important. If we show with flow, it is conclusive. It is conclusive. So, here we are seeing coronary nicely flowing, no flow reversal which can be visible if it is anomalous coronary 
and she is at the same time showing the pulmonary veins. The left upper pulmonary vein is coming here. This is left lower. This is right lower and right upper we saw from the subcostal, from the neck also crab view we can see. Okay. One thing uh, Dr. Ghosh uh, pointed out a very important thing that is while I was showing you this, I was adjusting the scale. Coronary flow is seen at a much, much lower scale, adjusting it to a 0.3 or so. Because at higher scales, the flow, I can show you that if I put it at 1 or maybe 0.7 or 9, there is lesser flow. Because around 0.2 or 0.3, it will be better visible. And one more thing that it will be flow both in systole as well as diastole. It's a kind of a continuous flow. Okay. Please proceed. And uh, just a few pictures yes. that uh, in the four chamber view, we do see not only the four chambers, we get an idea about the um, sort of the size of the chambers. Here we can see there is slight LALV dilatation, though we measure it later on. Also, we check for the uh, pulmonary veins. We also check for the pulmonary okay. venous return. Okay. Because sometimes we may be fooled. It's a perfectly four chamber view, but then subsequently we just uh, check it and see that the, the pulmonary veins were draining elsewhere, causing PAPVC. So it's important to check the pulmonary veins also. So three veins we see in this view, mild LA dilatation with LV dilatation and C showing this is right lower, right upper we don't see, this is right lower and right left sided two veins on both sides of the aorta. So, three veins, that's why in the adult report it is commonly written three pulmonary veins seen. Yeah, okay. So, in our next we sweep a little up as was told and we can see that it's a kind of a, <clears throat> we see the aorta coming up from here. Shall I invert the images? I think I'll invert the images. Little. We can see this whiff of AI coming down. It's sort of hugging the wall, the and and anterior mitral leaflet. The mild AI that's coming out, and then we if we move even forward. Then we have the pulmonary artery, the RVOT and the pulmonary artery. So you can show the suprasternal and suprasternal in the pediatric age group again. Yeah. If I, uh, let's go to the parasternal long axis. Shall we repeat it or shall we go to the short axis? Short axis. Direction. The next question you can show, I think. Yeah. The Otherwise short axis. Correct, yes, correct, yes, correct. Yes, yes. So, the so in the this is sort of coming down to the two chamber view in the short axis and we can nicely scan the septum in this view also if we tilt it towards a little towards the apex and it is mandatory whenever we see the VSD it's mandatory for us to check whether there are any additional VSDs or not because especially apical muscular VSDs may be missed. If we miss a very significant apical muscular VSD it will be a very nasty surprise for the surgeon on table. Okay, so shall we continue? Yes. With the next, next you show. Yeah. Next, next. Sidedness of the arch, flow reversal, obstruction, and ring sling anomalies. So these are the couple of important points we try to see. Left arch with normal dividing branches means we are ruling out major arch anomalies. So first branch, first branch going to the right. Here she is showing two left branches, left carot carotid, left subclavian. Yes, she is showing nicely, one, two. And very nice flow, uh, laminar flow downstream. So no significant coarctation. Yeah, the, for the sidedness, I'll just do the sweep. It is like I put the probe vertically with the pointer up and then rotate it to 3 o'clock position. 
So we can see that the first branch is going towards the right and dividing into two. And that if you can show nicely, because it will be good, good to see. Yeah, I am. Short axis of the aorta. Hmm? So I can show in the pointer. Sorry. So this you can see over here. Wait a moment. This is the first branch which is dividing into two vessels and going towards the right. So it will be the side will be the opposite to it. That is, uh, if it is going towards the right, the first branch, like here, and dividing into two vessels, it will be a left-sided arch. In right-sided arches, it will go towards the left. So here we can see this. First branch is dividing into two. This is the second branch, and this is the third branch. And here we have a nice DTA. If we can, Sis. if we can pull Sis. this up Sis. further down, we can see there is no coaptation. Nice laminar flow as to even if we see this coaptation, abdominal one always guides us because two such cases misled by. That kind of orientation, it was in the middle of the thoracic aorta. Upstream was laminar only. It was the abdominal Doppler which picked up and it was in the middle thoracic. I will show the case today in the second half that how we can be misled by the suprasternal view. If we have a strong suspicion, then abdominal aorta Doppler always, always helps. So, shall we go to the next case? The veins you show, then segmental analysis component, again we were seeing uh, right superior shall vena cava. Shall we show in the next patient? Okay, okay, that's fine. Any patient you can show. So, she is just trying to uh, show another nice case to you, all of us and share. So, one part of the veins, veins important part, okay. LSBC in isolation is not less common. It is seen. Uh, implications. Two fold isolated LSVC. The future requirement of pacemaker, the EP fellows, they, they get very angry if it is not known because they will keep on puncturing and <laughs> they will not get. Uh, surgeons get difficulty in going to bypass if we don't no. know. So, knowing LSVC from the operational point of view, and if it is unroofed or partially unroofed, then it will add to the desaturation component. And that's why it need to be covered or it should be put to the pulmonary artery. So, as an as an person guiding to the surgeons, LSBC is a menace. Uh, if it is missed, uh, it is a costly miss. So, we are again going back to our… So this is the second patient, na? Uh, so, second. the images are better than the first girl. Okay. Yes, she is again showing very nice image, very, very nice this image. Is the pulsatile aorta. Yes, please carry pulsatile on. Pulsatile aorta. If we put the pulse, the pulse Doppler over here, we can see the pulsatility. So, little bit more prominent aortic flow reversal, little bit. You can and see? Yes. Over here, there is uh, IVC. Show the color. Slip to the left. Yes. yes. So, very subtle, uh, so, 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 aorta, aorta. So, so, not much of flow reversal per se. So, you see, 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 this is what we were discussing. There is a subtle flow reversal. Okay. Yes. And now okay. we are going to the so, the same thing following this is right superior vein, the right pulmonary vein, right upper pulmonary mm -hmm. vein, which is coming interatrial septum is intact. IVC and C showing bicaval view. Slowly C is moving up. And then we will just end the interatrial septum, which is normal. Interventricular septum. So, one thing she showed, she started showing this is the another shunt lesion. There is some flow coming to the pulmonary artery. This this red flow coming to pulmonary artery. So there is aortopulmonary communication, and most commonly this is patent ductus arteriosus. Carry back on, to the four chamber view. So mild LALV dilated that we need to z-score and understand. Peter, you have to go
aorta and pulmonary artery are crossing we'll go to the um, what we I, call the modified uh, I, th I think show here you have shown already mm -hmm. here you can show mm -hmm. the ductal view mm -hmm. So parasternal view with cursor pointed towards up in short axis in first second space region will show the patent this is in this is in short axis she is showing this pulmonary artery is dividing and a flow coming which is restrictive this is the patent ductus arteriosus the ductal view only will show the PDA in its full form to analyze the shape of the PDA and the size of the PDA both. Here in the short axis it just gives, it is easy to pick up in short axis. It is very easy, the moment we put our regular short axis probe in the pulmonary artery we will get PDA. It is little roof of the LPA it is draining. She, is, she has put the Continuous web Doppler, we can appreciate this continuous communication. She is checking the gradient, 65. So, it is relatively restrictive. Okay. If you can show in the ductal view, in the first space, cursor up, first space, go one space up. Yes, yes. So, um, this is the modified ductal view. <clears throat> it is like, you know, the what we call the Trishul of Lord Shiva. There are three branches coming out. The From the right to left, just I will show with the pointer. This is the RPA, this is the LPA and at the left, to the left of the uh, LPA is the duct. Here it is little bit difficult because this is a very tiny duct with a lot of restrictive flow as is very evident. If I measure it, it will come to something like uh, 1 to 1 1.5 maximum, less than 2 millimeters. I hope to get a little better view, something like 2 less than 2. And if I take a, um, if I take a gradient across it, the gradient is very important here, the pressure gradient across it. It is showing a continuous flow that this Doppler pattern is very important. It is showing a continuous flow and that flow is it has got a total gradient that is peak velocity crossing 4. So, 4 is our Cinderella number. Above 4, that means it is beyond 60, 60 or 64 millimeter mercury. That means that there is probably no pulmonary arterial hypertension. Also, it is a long narrow duct. So, the low, the pressures in the diastole, are, the pressure difference is a little less. It is around 15. And uh, I, we did not see the gradient in the VSD. In the VSD also, it is important to see the gradient because again, if you get a cutoff of about 60 and up roughly, then we can be sure that there is definitely no pulmonary arterial hypertension. So, that is extremely important for us, uh, especially for uh, deciding the treatment modalities and all. And here we can see the tricuspid aortic valve, it is very important whenever we are getting any ductal lesions or any, anything, we have to rule out any bicuspid aortic valve and uh, yes, the, this is the mitral valve, if from this view, from this parasternal short axis or rather the modified going one space up, getting the threshold like modified parasternal long axis view. If I tilt the probe towards the apex and just slide down a bit, one or two uh, intercostal spaces, then you can see that this is a nice um, two chambers, the circular LB showing good function with the two apical, the, these two muscles, okay. papillary muscles are there and, uh, towards, and this is to, uh, towards the extreme apex. 
and again you have seen you see that i'm putting the color across the interventricular septum to rule out any interventricular septal defects anything you want to add <laughs> venous anomalies you wanted to show so uh, normal veins you showed these views you can come back So this is thymus. One important point about thymus: frequently, pediatricians get an X-ray of the child and gets a very big heart. So the referral comes cardiomegaly for cardiac evaluation, and a big chunk of patients have a large normal thymus, thymus with lateral spread. So that will give uh, impression of cardiomegaly. So just reassurance is that component. If we are seeing the X-ray and cardiomegaly, definitely there can be cardiac anomalies. But the, in the neonatal pediatric age group, thymus, yes, it's a big, big thing. Here, yes, the veins, if you show, superior vena cava, innominate, and coming down. Veins. Okay, ah. I, I was showing. Okay. I'll just quickly show the arch and the PD in the sagittal view. You can see that uh, we were getting nice pictures of the PDA coming down over here. This so that's a connection. good view she is showing. This is the uh, DTA and uh, this is the PDA and towards the left is the pulmonary artery. LPA, PDA and the um, descending thoracic aorta. Again quickly I'll show you the um, sidedness of the arch. First branch going towards the right and branching out into two branches. This is the first branch that is coming out and dividing into two branches. And the second branch and the third branch. So we are very happy we don't have any aberrant vessels. It's whenever we get a PDA, it's important to rule out any coarctation associated with it or any other arch anomalies. Yeah. I'll just reposition here. Very good. Very good. Yes. No, see, okay, okay, okay. So we put the probe like this with the pointer up to get the sagittal parasternal short ex uh, long sagittal um, suprasternal views. And if I can show you with the pointer. This, this is the second the first branch. branch. This is the first branch. That okay, is going, okay, 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 okay. I'm moving the probe to three o'clock position and it's dividing into two. Th that if you can show in a from the short axis the branch opening and dividing, that will be conclusive. Yes, yes, you are now you are showing yes. Okay. So this is the first branch, you have yes, a little bit of more rotation and yes. So now, now she is showing. One red should come and that should divide in, that will be more convincing. So this is the first branch she is showing. Okay. This is the second branch. Yes. The division, if you can show. Yes. So she is now showing the division. This is what little bit retained that initial position. Yes. So that is the carotid and then left subclavian, right subclavian, right carotid. Little bit of rotation. Yes. Yes. So now she is showing. So the division is important to show, though it is going on the right, it may not divide and there can be an aberrant right, right subclavian and that can be part of the arch anomaly. Okay. So we have seen the arteries with putting the scale up. To see the veins, we will have to put the scale a little bit down. So here are the very generous flow across the innominate and then the SBC. So the innominate both veins are coming, joining right superior vena cava going down and this is this one of the location vein. where we can it's get SBC. anomalous right upper pulmonary vein draining as a blob of red. If we are seeing a right the sinus venosus AHD with anomalous right upper pulmonary vein, this is the location we will see the vein coming in. 
This is a crab view, I think you were alluding to. Yes, she's showing the and pulmonary veins. Sort of the crab view. One, two, yes, a little bit better. We'll put the color. We've got a lot of splash of colors on the screen. So, yeah, she's showing all the all the pulmonary veins. One, two, three. Two D wise, it's better visible. I think images yeah. are. I think two D wise also it is. Yes, 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 it's nicely. The child has been extremely cooperative with us no, no, because most of them difficult. will start crying at this stage. So there are four. This one, this one, this one, and this one. Four pulmonary vessels that are coming. Pulmonary veins. Anything you want to show more? Yes, please, madam. Ah, ah, ah. She was trying to show. You show in the short axis. I agree. That's what you are telling. You are killing the head. The, the division of the first branch is the most important thing. So that's what I was trying to tell. Uh, So I am showing now the aorta in short axis and first branch which is going to the right and it is dividing one red, one blue. We can appreciate from here the whole of the, oh sorry, 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 I am pressing too hard. So this is the division of the first branch, oh yeah, sorry, 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 I am troubling the child too much. So the division, it's going on right and both, this is upper one, red one is the uh, carotid and then downstream is the right subclavian. If we are not seeing this division, then there is a possibility of anomalous right subclavian coming distally as a last branch and that substrate, there is a risk of arch ring ring anomalies. Thank you. All this coming there because when the images are getting transferred, there is loss of pixel. So machine, it is always better. I, I, sorry, 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 sorry. Yes, yes. So now the images are better. We can appreciate both the uh, veins. The child is slowly losing its patience. We are seeing. I think anything additional, madam. We can contribute in a segmental analysis. This ductal view, what I wanted, I can in the same child is this is the yes, please, madam. So, uh, yeah, the two important points Devdatta was trying to tell is, yes, madam, you see the first branch going which side, it is here in the right side. So, it is, you see, I am showing the division of the arch and the fall of the arch. So, fall of the arch, if we scan the ascending aorta, so I am scanning the ascending aorta, this is ascending aorta and then I am slowly scanning, it is falling on the left side. This is add-on. We usually go by the first branch, which side and the division of the branch. Second thing and sometimes we can appreciate the, the tracheal shadow and we can appreciate that which side it is falling. So from ascending, I am scanning scoli up and down, then it is coming down as descending thoracic aorta. 
on the left side. If it is right, it will not fall on the left, rather it will fall on the right same side only. And the first division branch, so here it is in left arch, the division I showed, so this is the first branch going. In the ductal view, because it is a small restrictive PDS, she was showing uh, the, the parastinal views were not good, but if the suprastinal views are better. So, the duct anatomy is better visible from the suprastinal view. So, this is the from suprastinal view, it is a restrictive PDA. Usually, first left intercostal space, we get a good ductal view where we can see the LPA. This is little bit of modified suprastinal. So that I am just trying to show. So you can appreciate the PDA, LPA and arch in the same view. So anything, any question, madam, thank you for uh, augmenting our discussion and all questions and this we will be very happy to discuss with the experts sitting in the all also can contribute. It is a live workshop where all we should discuss to, to learn more and more. Yes, th thank you madam. Usually by and large the cursor should, cursor should point to the left only by convention. So when I am showing, usually changing the cursor to the right and trying to show right arch is not a very standard practice. For our A's we can try to understand, but by convention we should keep the cursor to the left and then try to understand that which side it is going and fall of arch. Fall of arch is a additional point to confirm which sidedness is the arch. It is So, if I am holding the probe with 90 is a 0 degree with the cursor showing to the left, uh, there is a no camera to show that one I could have shown and ascending aorta, this is the ascending aorta, I am slowly sweeping up, 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 up and it is coming down descending, it is to the left. In case of right arch, this left will be coming down right, not the opposite side by the, but on the same side, that is the fall of the arch understanding. So, first branch will be on the left and the fall will be on the right. One particular case madam added, so always creates little bit of confusion is the L malpose diota. There we sometimes get difficulty in the fall of the arch. First branch going to the right always is of help because the aorta is left malpose. So, fall of the arch is not very effective to understand there. This is one common example I am just citing. Anything madam please, thank you for augmenting the discussion and making it more interactive. Again, usually uh, size of the PDA we measure in the P end, uh, so we go to the ductal view and then try to understand here we are trying to see the ductal view. So, scroll freeze and trying to see the, it is a restrictive PDA. So, the color anatomically it is not giving a very good image, but if I measure that it will come around possibly something like one point, less than 2, 1.6. Uh, this ductal view then going to the suprasternal, suprasternal uh, view which will be corroboratory and then coming to the short axis. Aortic end usually length of the duct, aortic end these are all add on measurement for the intervention purpose that how much space we have, shape of the duct, whether it is conical, here it is classic conical duct. You can appreciate it is an cone 
draining in the pulmonary artery, long tubular duct which is more common in small child. So this shape of the duct, length of the duct, aortic end is more important to understand for the intervention perspective. Otherwise for surgeons it does not matter. Yes, so thank you. I, I think uh, any more question otherwise we can wind up the session for the, for the next uh, very nice interactive live case scenarios. So, madam, you can take over. Thank you.